Well, this video will be more of an advertisement for someone um, else rather than uh, my own um, uh, video, but uh, I'll put the link in the description to this one. Eric Klein, uh, 1177 BC, the year civilization collapsed. Uh, lots of other uh, lectures are available, but basically it's dealing with uh, what some have called the ancient dark age. So roughly from around about the uh, 12th century uh, BC to about the 8th, century BC, there seems to have been across the Mediterranean a collapse uh, amongst all well, civilizations, especially through trade. And in this uh, particular video, he talks about the, the letters um, that were written between various uh, city-states and uh, uh, some argument whether it was, a, whether it was a, the sea peoples causing this collapse or whether it was a combination of the sea peoples, environmental um, like a natural disaster, uh, some sort of environmental issue at the time. But uh, like interesting because during this he talks about the Uluburum um, shipwreck. But firstly he details trade and and he shows how there was a, a system of trade that went around the Mediterranean and all sorts of goods were, uh, were traded, including glass and metallurgy as well as uh, shoes, and uh, you know, fancy, you know, expensive clothing, jewelry, and all sort, um, including um, dried fruits and other luxury items. And there was again this very elaborate, very complex system of trade, including some uh, materials which you might not suspect from that time. But again, it points to this a much older system of uh, trade in there on the um, Uluburum uh, shipwreck, which was off the coast of uh, Turkey. So there we see where the shipwreck. Uh, is there, uh, but they also had uh, swords uh, and weapons which were from all different regions from uh, around the Mediterranean. Uh, here's a picture of the shipwreck itself and these objects are ingots of bronze, sorry of copper and tin and interesting that there was uh, for every 10 of these copper ingots there was one of bronze, uh, 10 part, sorry one of tin. 10 parts copper, one part tin creates bronze. And again, this Bronze Age and, and a, a wider, you know, quite an elaborate system of trade. They were moving, you know, this was one ship, but this trade trade had gone on for centuries. There were a lot more ships and quite a bit of material had been, you know, moved around this part of the world from the Hittites to the Egyptians, uh, Phoenicians and all these other areas. It's a reconstruction of the... Um, shipwreck hull you know, based on where the amphora and the ingots and these other uh, pieces were found. It's interesting that amongst the shipwreck was also found glass and no, uh, it, these glass ingots were found on the ship, none have been found on land. Texts uh, from, and uh, letters and uh, from that time speak of that but this was one of the rare examples and in the shipwreck where we have glass uh, ingots, coloured glass uh, as well. Uh, reconstruction of the ship and even see the ship's rigging and the use of uh, uh, of pulleys and this use of mechanical advantage, uh, knowing how to make rope, knowing how to tie the pro proper knot and how to rig your sailing was just as important way back then as what it is uh, until the recent days of sail. Here's a image of the shipwreck site and there you can see some uh, stone anchors. Here's some of the ingots of glass. Um, existence of these was suggested, suggested by text, but so far none have been found in on land. But again, we have this evidence of, you know, uh, not not only of the um, production of glass, but also that it was traded, as well. Here's uh, one of the stone anchors for about 220 kilos. Back then, they would use stone anchors like this if it got caught. Um, you could just cut it away, and they had multiple of these stone um, anchors within the ship. There's another reconstruction. This is in the museum, uh, Bodrum Museum. This is a reconstruction of the sea floor of you know how these amphora and the ingots were placed to give some idea because obviously the uh, wooden hull had had and uh, had rotten away. But we have uh, it's just how it was placed and how they got a, a rough idea of how the um, the goods on the ship were stored. Some of the amphora, amphora, um, these. Now they typically had this sharp point at the end, interesting in regards to well, weights and measures. Uh, amphora tended to be of certain sizes, like it was a standard size for different amphora for different goods. Historically, um, there would be like a sacred amphora and you would fill it with water or with 
which would give you a uh, liquid measure, like a standard, or they would be filled with grain. So whether it was uh, liquid, wet goods, or dry goods, these type, you know, um, these were used as a, you know, it was a standard production size. And so when you were uh, sending your order, to, uh, you know, send your uh, order to the people across the Mediterranean. And there's a lot of letters and clay tablets and stuff like that found where they describe not only the um, uh, uh, people making you know the order for certain goods. There's all, and he'll mention this in link in the description. But they even there are let, letters of uh, return where people, uh, come, you know, um, I think it was Ham your Rabbi even received a pair of shoes and he actually sent them back. And there was like, it's like one of the oldest uh, documented returns. On the ship was also found this uh, symbol, and it's interesting because I've seen this uh, elsewhere. It's, uh, sometimes connected with Inanna, or uh, Astart, or uh, uh, Ishtar as well. But this, I've seen them before. But especially this, the lady holding uh, uh, the stag as well, which has been a common theme. Sometimes you know, there's very similar ones with her holding two snakes. As well, but this was found, and again, it's just found across the world. Uh, the one offhand that I have in my uh, collection is from Hebron, and we just see how they've the same symbols has been moved around as well. Here are some of the copper ingots. How the um, copper was, in, uh, you can see it was molten, put into a, a cast, and then say to give you a, a standard um, measure of of quantity of 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 weight and for every 10 copper ingot cells, one tin, mix them together, that's the perfect recipe for bronze. So again, I'll put the link in the description. Uh, there's, if you, you know, do Eric Klein search, you'll find a lot more, or the um, ancient dark age, it's a very interesting period. It sort of shows how there was very sophisticated trade across the Mediterranean. It's interesting around about this time as well, that the mummies which contain um, coca and tobacco, including a tobacco beetle, uh, pointing to the fact that there was actually cross-Atlantic trade at the time as well. And so again, just a short one, yeah, please, if you're interested in all, uh, at all, um, Eric Klein, um, the year civilization collapsed, the ancient Dark Age, really interesting little piece of history, and again, the evidence of not just the written evidence, but also the material goods as found in the um, Uluburum shipwrecks. Anyway, have a good one.